and we're going to look at the art of Georgia O'Keeffe. And that's what we're gonna use for our inspiration for our enlarged flower. If you notice this picture, it's called Morning Glories from 1935. And she shows you not the whole entire flower. She just shows you the parts that maybe she loves the most. And I'm gonna teach you how to do that with a reference photo today. Today we're gonna to draw a flower and we're going to use a viewfinder to crop out our image. You can take a uh, reference photo off the internet um, from a calendar. Um, you can take a photograph from a flowers from your own garden. And um, we're gonna place the viewfinder on top of your artwork or the image, the reference photo rather, so that you can decide like what part you want to draw and paint and what part you want to eliminate. Uh, the easiest way to make a viewfinder is just to take a piece of paper, fold it in half. You can either draw a rectangle on the paper and then just take your scissor and you're going to snip out two vertical lines, then turn it sideways, put your scissor in there and kind of cut out another one. You're cutting out a square and now you have a window, like a picture frame that you can place over your image to crop it out. So you can make it smaller. If you just want to take a small section, you can move that like so. So there you go. I'm going to use this image today that I printed off the internet and I'm gonna crop it out and I'm just gonna take this center section. I really like that. It's gonna make my drawing um, appear to be more abstract. Um, so let's go. So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is take tape and tape my viewfinder onto my reference photo once I like the composition, just so that it doesn't move. So once I have my viewfinder taped down to my um, reference photo, I like to make marks in the middle on my viewfinder, on the top, bottom, and the two sides. I do the same thing to my square piece of paper, top, bottom, middle, in the sides. And I make marks so that I can kind of line up. I can look at where some of these lines are gonna line up on my paper. So as you notice, the paper that I'm using is much bigger than the photo. Um, and they're both similar square shapes, but this one's larger. Georgia O'Keeffe is um, famous for enlarging her flowers. And this is the way that we can um, enlarge ours. So these marks are almost, uh, they're there to help us uh, to draw in scale so we can kind of line things up. So looking at my reference photo, I uh, see that my first line, I want to make these two petals here in the foreground. I, I look at where they line up with the little marks that I made and I'm gonna start to draw them in. I see one starting over here and it's just a curve line going to come down to like there and then I start my second petal this one over here and I see another curve line you can sketch lightly and you can always make adjustments so right now I have just two lines sketched in and that represents the two big petals that are closest to the viewer uh, the next shape, so we're really just using lines and creating shapes for these petals, but the next shape that I see is the center of the flower over here, this shape, and I kind of want to look at where it lines up in the center of my project. So I'm going to make a mark at where I think I should start, and I'm just going to draw this. You could draw it as like a long oval and then change the shape. I'm kind of giving it this weird wiggly organic shape, just like so. And then I'll start drawing 
my contour lines, and those are these lines, these curved lines, because now the petal is curving out and down and away from us. So we want to use not straight lines, we want to curve those lines. That helps to make the flower, that's going to help to make the flower look more rounded. So here we go. These lines you might want to keep kind of light, but I'm going to press hard so that you can see them. So now it doesn't really look like a flower just yet. The shading with the color um, is definitely going to make it look more like a flower, but also we have enlarged a small section so our painting looks more abstract. And even though we're working from realism and we're working from a, a real photograph of um, a flower, we're just painting a small section of it. So we're changing it making it our own and um, it's more abstract even though it still will look like a flower. So now that we have our sketch complete uh, the next step is I'm actually going to put in some of the lighter colors the yellows and the whites uh, with some crayon. It's going to create a wax resist for when I add my um, watercolor paint or watered down acrylic paint. So I'm actually using crayon in this project. And I love to use crayons, but if you don't have crayons, you could use colored pencil. If you only have paint, you can certainly paint this section in, but I'm going to create a little bit of a wax resist. And that's kind of a cool technique to teach you as well. Um, if you don't know what it is, it's just basically uh, because the crayon is made with wax, the paint, watery, any type of water material is not going to uh, stick to or attach to uh, the crayon or the wax. You, so you can use colored pencils. You do have to press really hard um, for this step, but I'm, I don't want my yellow to get too, too dark. So I'm pressing light here and then I'm going to use the white crayon and come in with that. You can't really see the white crayon on white paper. So you, you have to make sure that you cover all your area because any area that you don't cover with the white crayon um, when you're adding the blue paint, um, will those little spots that you miss will turn blue, which is fine because it can add to the beauty of your project. So I don't want to draw on top of these pencil lines, but I'm going to draw right next to them. So hopefully you can see that I'm drawing next to my pencil line wherever I want my line to stay light. It's going to give me a nice light edge, but you do have to press hard. And even if you press hard, sometimes it, sometimes the paint covers it. So it's, it's not perfect. And I'm going to overlap the white onto the yellow. And that's fine. And again, wherever I want my project to stay light, I can color in with some crayon. I'm really just going to do these edges. And I'm going to try to make my paint lighter by adding more water to it when I get to that stage. So I'm just following with the white crayon along the edges. Just like so. So I painted this one last night and um, I used colored pencil and a watered down acrylic paint on top and the whole background I colored in with crayons. So I'm just trying to use materials that I think you might have at home. So I'm turning the acrylic paints into more of like a watercolor paint. I used my viewfinder and this was a picture from my garden. It's a stargazing, a stargazer lily. Um, so for more advanced students, you definitely could choose like a harder, uh, more challenging, 
um, floral picture and again use the viewfinder crop it out and you just use whatever materials you have at home so before I start with the paint I definitely want to make this edge here where the blue meets the yellow I definitely want to come in with some white and I'm using my um, crayon to do that so I'm creating that wax resist with the crayon And I just want to color it in, make sure that I leave some white area. And I have to press hard. And it won't hurt to go over all of your yellow with the white, just in case you miss some spots, some spots with the yellow that you can't really see. And it's hard to see where you're putting the white, so I get it. Sometimes if you hold your paper up on an angle, you can kind of see where you can see where you colored with the white. So to get started with our painting, we're going to need a variety of different size brushes. Smaller brushes would work fine. It would just take a little bit longer. If you have some wider brushes, they'll work out dandy, helping you to push the paint around a little bit faster. And you'll need some paint. I squeezed out two squeezes of white acrylic paint. I have a, um, a blue and then a violet, just in case we want to make the blue a little bit darker. We'll use our violet today. And then an extra paper plate for mixing. We're going to have to make our paint very watery today. So I'm going to use an eyedropper, but you can also scoop water onto your paper plate with your brushes. It just takes a little longer, that's all. I have my reference photo here and I'm going to start with the lighter colors in the back section and I'm going to leave these two darker petals um, for the end of the project. So we're going to take the white paint and we're going to take just the medium sized brush and I'm going to scoop some white onto my empty paper plate. I'm going to take two scoops for now. And I want to add water to my plate. And notice I'm taking about two squeezes from my eyedropper. And I want to mix that paint into the water. And I'm not even mixing all of the paint. If you notice over here, it's still a thick blob of paint. So I have my watery paint over here and I just mixing out the lumps. I'm going to take, rinse my brush and I'm going to take a little bit, a small, very small amount of blue and I'm going to add that to my watery mixture. Now, when you add white to your paint, it becomes very opaque. So we're gonna need a lot of water. Make sure that this mixture stays watery enough. Rinse my brush and over here, I'm gonna just drag that white. And I want a, a very, very light blue that looks like a white. It's a little thick. I'm gonna add some more water to it. So now I have two shades of my light blue and they're in a very, very watery stage. I'm gonna start with this very, very light blue color and I'm gonna start to paint this back section. And on camera, it probably looks more like a white. It's not even it's so pale. It looks bluer on my paper plate. And I'm just dry, painting up and I'm trying to paint on the curve in the direction that I drew those lines, those contour lines.
If your paint is covering your pencil lines, you need to add more water. See, as I paint over my pencil lines, I can still see them. So I have enough water mixed into the paint. So if you paint and it covers, just take some water and push it around. So right now you're using this acrylic paint more like a watercolor. You use water to push acrylic paint around too, but you, you use water also with watercolor paint. So I'm just wetting the paper, laying my really light blue down, and it really looks like I'm just painting the paper with a whitish tone. And now that paint should still be uh, a little bit on the wet side. I have a couple eraser shavings in my painting. I wanna so whisk them away. I can come back and start to paint in with some of this uh, lighter blue color. And I'm gonna come along my lines here and this is the blue that's just a little bit darker than the blue that I just mixed. And I don't wanna completely cover all of the light, light blue. I just wanna to try to blend it in. So this is where you kind of have fun mixing and blending paint in the direction that the petals are curving in. So you definitely want to have your brush strokes painting in the direction of those curved lines. If you feel like it's getting too dark, dip back into your lighter color and start mixing some of the lighter color into your paint. You can also take some straight white paint and where your reference photo has whiter lines, lighter lines, you can come in and put that white paint in there as well. You can always put some of these curved lines back in at the end of your painting when the paint is dry, just like that. So again, I'm going to come in over here now and use some of the light blue or our medium blue we can call it a medium blue but i want to keep this section really light almost like a white so i'm just painting i'm changing direction here because my line now changes direction so you're painting in the direction that you drew your lines and please paint off the paper. Georgia O'Keeffe is known for these really large flowers. Her petals look like they went off the paper. Look, I'm painting my petal off the paper. You wanna make sure you're not leaving a funny edge. So you should have something underneath your paper, like newspaper. She was in awe of skyscrapers in New York City and that's really why she decided to um, start painting flowers really, really large. She said when she walked around the city, you just couldn't avoid looking at these huge buildings that they were putting up. And um, she wanted people to look at flowers the way we look at these big buildings. So I'm coming in with the dark, darker medium blue. I'm not going all the way into the center and I'm painting kind of like on a horizontal curve. resist the more watery the paint is the more 
it resists. So in here, it, it covered a little bit, but you can see it's like not wanting to stick. So you can kind of wipe that out with some water and a paintbrush. And it'll just pull the acrylic paint up. I kind of like the texture that it created. We'll see how that dries. to this corner. If you notice on the picture, the corner, the petals are a little bit darker. I even see a little violet in there, so I'll probably play around with throwing some violet into that too. But I'm going to start with like this medium color and some water and just keep dragging it from the corner in. So I kind of stop my brush kind of on a curve too. I don't want to stop in a straight line. And I can keep making that corner a little darker just by dabbing my, dipping my brush into some darker paint. And then just painting the corner, blending it in and then stopping, not going as far. This is like a monochromatic painting because I'm really just using blue with white, at least in the petal portion. But I, I think I'm gonna throw some purple in there too. And the brush strokes, it's okay because that's kind of how um, petals have little crinkles and folds in them. And remember, I don't have to paint it exactly like this. I really want to turn this painting into, you know, my own work of art, even though I am looking at a reference photo. like a chisel whether it's a flat or an angled brush and I, I'm loading up into the white and kind of pressing out the paint and then I'm drawing lines some of these white lines back in where I had put the crayon and I want to pull out some white from this center and if I use keep the brush keep flattening the bristles I can paint lines with this angle brush or a flat brush and these contour lines coming out from the center with the lighter white or even the, the light, light blue color. This wax resist mark worked really well. But I wanna cover my pencil lines. So I wanna take white paint and just paint over. So now I know where to paint those lines. 
And this paint doesn't have to be that watered down. The white that you're putting in here could be uh, right from the white paint squeeze that you have on your um, palette with no water added to it. Have fun painting these lines and creating the texture of what a flower petal might look like. Those ribbed lines. So for the next step, I would like to work on the two larger petals um, on the outside of the painting. And I want to just kind of show you the direction that you're going to be painting, curving out and then changing direction this way. And then your directional lines, your brush strokes should kind of curve this way um, for that section. I'm going to start with a medium blue. I'm going to gradually add darker blues to it and some of the purple, the violet as well. corner even more. I'm going to take dark blue and a dab of the violet onto my paintbrush and I'm going to start from the corner. The paint's starting to dry a little bit so if you get some rough brush strokey marks you might want to go back in with the lighter colors and just keep blending and playing around with the blend until you get it just the way you like it. <music> Thank you. 
darken up this petal, especially the section underneath here, because this is underneath this one. So the top piece overlaps it a little bit. So I definitely want to go into my darker uh, blue and my purple paint and just put it right underneath there. But I laid down some like uh, medium dark blue first. And you want to be careful. You might want to use a smaller detail brush so that your shape doesn't get too um, misshapen over here. You want this to look like it's overlapping. You want this one to look like it's underneath. So if you have to kind of come in with a smaller brush, you might have to outline it and fix that up a little bit, <clears throat> just like I had to. It's no biggie. You could do that when it's dry. You can fix things. Not a problem. Just any brush you're not using, make sure you leave it in the water if you're using acrylic paint because it's going to dry up on you and ruin your brush. So I really want to come into the dark blue and the violet and I'm darkening up this corner in here. And I'm just going to keep mixing and blending until I get this petal to look similar to this. See where it's lighter? I definitely want, oh, sorry. See where it's lighter? I want to put the lights in. I want to leave the darks where the darks are. So I really need to use my reference photo and look for where the highlights, the lighter blues and violets are, and where the darker blues are. and I'm kind of um, pushing down and then lifting up on my brush to get like this kind of um, not a not it's kind of like a fuzzy edge it's creating lines just for highlights and I kind of lift up on my brush as I do it see I'm touching the heel and then the toe and then kind of lifting up and working in the direction that the pedal should be curving in. brush I'm barely pressing down I'm just trying to make some highlights even on my darker petals where I see it's a little bit lighter so I'm going to play around with that and you should uh, experiment with yours as well wherever it looks a little lighter you just come in if you don't like it you can always change something okay if you feel like a highlight curves a little bit try to make it curve with your paintbrush. 
the contour lines, the contour line brush strokes, painting in the direction that the petals are curved in, that's what's gonna make it look uh, more like three dimensional. But remember, this isn't an exact representation of the photo. And in Georgia O'Keeffe's time, she was actually considered abstract. Today, abstract art looks very different. Um, from this, uh, we can recognize that these are still flowers. Some abstract art today, uh, you really don't even know um, what exactly it is. It's different for everyone that looks at it. So abstract art can look real. It can be taken from nature as Georgia O'Keeffe used nature for her reference. And we're using nature today by using a floral um, reference photo. Just have fun, play around with your highlights and your shadows, and we'll check back in. I'm coming back into the background with some white, and I'm just putting the straight white on my brush, flattening it, using it like a chisel, and working from the center out and trying to keep my lines in the direction that my petals were curving in, just to create more highlights from the center, make the center look a little lighter. If you feel like your corners um, need to darken up down here or the corner down here, you can just dip into some of your uh, straight paint. Don't have too much paint on your brush. A little goes a long way. You can always add more and you can start from the corner in and just dry brush those darker shadows in and darken up the corner. And that's going to make the illusion that um, it's this trumpet flower and the petals are kind of curving out. So we're working in reverse. So I worked from the center out with the white and now I'm taking some darker. I'm just, I barely have any paint on my brush and that's called dry brush. And I'm just kind of dragging it off the edges into the petals. And there you have it. We'll just come play around with the center and we will be finished. I'm just gonna take a little scoop of yellow paint and put it right in my watery paint tray. Just took it right out of the lid of my bottle and I'm going to just mix a little bit of yellow with some white. I have some light blue on here and it makes a little bit of like a greenish mixing with the white and the blue, you know, not so bright yellow. And it's supposed to be white in the center, but I'm seeing some shadows in here. So I'm gonna paint those in first. So I'm taking my small detail brush. And like I said, I just took a little yellow, mixed it with some white and some blue to make like a, like a yellow green. And I'm gonna paint in here, but I'm also gonna make it a little bit darker cause I do not like the pencil line hanging around on the edge of my, so I'm gonna darken my edge, see how that looks. Just with this little bit of darker green. I wanna get rid of those pencil lines. I don't wanna see them anymore. So I kinda of wanna take my small detail brush and just put this little green shadow. Hopefully it covers my pencil, but I'm gonna fill the center in with some white. I can go over it again. Try not to make this too wide of an outline if you can. I'm kind of just dabbing my brush. And I hope you could see what I'm doing. I'm just outlining, going over that pencil outline. And I can take some bright yellow and drag it out a little bit. already drying on my paper so it's not really going to drag out too much. Just a little bit of a bright yellow around the edge. It's up to you. And then I'm just going to dip into my white. I leave the yellow right on my brush. This is too much paint. So I dip my brush, roll it. I'm not even rinsing it. It has yellow. It's okay if this turns into like a creamy white. And I'm just kind of blocking in this shape now. and try to cover the pencil lines that way as well.
any pencil lines I see here, I can kind of cover with some white paint. If I don't like that, if I want to put some more lines in, I have a little yellow on my brush. It's okay. I can kind of pull some lines out. Curve lines, remember, follow the shape that, the direction rather, that the leaf is curving in, the petal rather is curving in. And I can use this light yellow even in here and kind of pull some curved lines with my detailer brush. If I feel like that outline is too dark, I could just go over it a little bit with some of that whiter yellowy color, tone it down a bit. And there you have it. There's our Georgia O'Keeffe flower for today. If you feel like you need more dark lines, go ahead, put them in. If you feel like you need to get a little darker in, in here, um, use some more purple, I'd love to see what you do. So remember, don't worry about being perfect. Art is not about being perfect. It's just about having fun, using the materials, trying to draw something. This is for more advanced students and it was colored pencil with a watered down acrylic on top of it, a crayon background, used a viewfinder. Today's project, we used our viewfinder and um, painted in our abstract Georgia O'Keeffe enlarged flower. I hope you enjoyed your uh, painting project today and have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.